Lecture 11.8, The Cantor Set. This photo is of the La Brea Tar Pits in Los Angeles, California. At this site, many pre-Ice Age fossils have been found over many years. The Page Museum is located at the La Brea Tar Pits, and this is the skeleton of a Colombian mammoth. One of the interesting things about calculus is we get to deal with big ideas like limits and infinity. This lecture is a chance to push our brains just a little bit further. First, a quick review of the binary number system. The common decimal system uses 10 characters and the idea of place value to write numbers larger than 9. The binary system uses only two digits, 0 and 1. Examples 110101 is equivalent to 2 to the 5th plus 2 to the 4th plus 2 squared plus 2 to the 0, which would be 32 plus 16 plus 4 plus 1 equals 53 in the decimal system. Point zero one one zero one zero one would be two to the negative two plus two to the negative three plus two to the negative five plus two to the negative seven or one fourth plus one eighth plus one thirty second plus one over one twenty eight which is equal to 53 over 128 in the decimal system. All of the points on the number line could be described by a binary number. The number might be terminating, repeating, or irrational, but every point would be included. The binary system could be used to describe every point of a line segment of length 1. For instance, that point is 1 half, which we could write in the binary system as 0 0.1. This point is 1 fourth, which in binary is 0 0.01. Here we have 2 thirds, which in binary is 0.1. 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, repeating. Pi over 4 is approximately 0 0.1100100100100111011. And it keeps going, just like in the decimal system. Pi is non-repeating and non-terminating, so pi over 4 would also be non-repeating and non-terminating. If we could list every possible binary number in the form of 0 followed by 1s and zeros after the binary point, we would designate every possible point between 0 and 1. Consider a line segment of unit length 1, represented by this bar here. Remove the middle third of the line segment, that is, we'll remove the part on the open interval between 1 third and 2 thirds. I have redrawn the remaining pieces. Remove the middle thirds of the remaining pieces, that is, on the intervals from 1 ninth to 2 ninths and 7 ninths to 8 ninths. Now repeat the process an infinite number of times. And I'll draw the next few times.
how much did we remove? The first time we, we removed one third, then two ninths, then four twenty sevenths, then eight eighty firsts, and so forth, which we could summarize as the summation from n equals zero to infinity of two to the n over three to the n minus one. Since this is an infinite convergent geometric series, the sum is one third over one minus two thirds or one. We started with a length of one and we removed one unit. So how many points are left? One minus one equals zero. Are there zero points left? Are you sure? Since the middle third of each remaining segment is removed, the endpoints of each segment remain. There are an infinite number of little segments remaining. So are there an infinite number of points remaining? The set of remaining points is called the Cantor set. The set was discovered in 1875 by Irish mathematician Henry John Stephen Smith. However, as we have seen in other cases, mathematical concepts are not always named after the first discoverer. The set was further studied and published by German mathematician Georg Cantor in 1883. The Cantor set has some remarkable properties. If we consider the remaining segments, we could label each segment either left or right as we descend to smaller segments. Any sequence of letters would designate a particular segment. For instance, here we have left, right, right. Any given sequence of choices determines a single remaining point. For example, LR, LL, RRR, LLL, RRR, and so forth. If we replace L and R with 0 and 1, we get binary numbers. Point zero one zero zero one 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 zero 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 one 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 etc. Since we could get any binary number between zero and one, the remaining points correspond with the points in the line segment that we started with. There are as many remaining points as there were points in the original segment. There are also an infinite number of other points that are never removed and remain in the interval. The number one fourth, for example, is in the bottom third, so it is not removed at the first step, and it is in the top third of the bottom third, and it is in the bottom third of that, and the top third of that, and so on ad infinitum, alternating between top and bottom thirds. Since it is never in one of the middle thirds, it is never removed, 
and yet it is also not one of the endpoints of any middle third. Actually, it can be shown by someone with greater math skills than we have that there are more of these non-endpoints than there are endpoints. This in itself is an interesting concept since both groups are infinitely large. Is it possible to have a larger infinity? It is also starting to appear that we are finishing with more points than we started with. The number of points in the Cantor set is said to be uncountable. No two points of the Cantor set are adjacent to each other, so it is said to be nowhere dense. Even though the Cantor set is an infinitesimal fraction of the line segment from 0 to 1, it has the same cardinality as the original set, that is, as many members. Since we removed a length of 1, the length of the Cantor set is 0. The Cantor set is both very large and very small at the same time, depending on how we define large. So, this should give you something to think about.